Praise God. Amen. I uh, want to uh, draw your t attention to the uh, second book of Chronicles, second epistle to the Chronic uh, Corinthians. I'm sorry, I said Chronicles, second Corinthians, the second epistle to the Corinthian church. Uh, we're going to be looking at chapter uh, number two and read two verses, verse number 10 and verse number 11. That's uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. Last Sunday morning, I preached the message title, Do You See What I See? Do You See What I See? I'm going to uh, conclude that thought, and that title, and that message. Do you see what I see? So if you need a title, that's Do You See What I See? Part 2. I'm going to be using another set of verses for the opening text. This is what I felt the Lord gave me um, this morning to start from. So, to whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgive or forgave anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. I want to read that again. That's a lot of eyes and the ifs and forgives and forgave. That's probably more forgiving right there in one verse than in some people's lifetime. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgive anything to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. He said all that to bring us to this statement. Semicolon there, and so this is combined. Next verse, verse number 11 says, after all this forgiven, after all, after he spoke uh, one, two, three, four, five times, he mentioned the word forgive or forgave. He, he, wanted, he wanted it to be uh, something that would stick in our mind. He talked to all, he, he spoke of, about forgiving to that degree, the umpteenth degree. Why? He tells us right here. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. The reason why I'm driving forgiveness home, the reason why I am... Uh, in your appearance, overemphasizing this need to forgive. I'm telling you, not only am I talking about you forgiving, but I'm going to take it to another level. I'm going to forgive those that you forgave. And I'm doing it. I'm forgiving. In the person of Christ. I am operating in the spirit ministry and person of Christ. It's one of the highest ministries. Hear me. It is the highest ministry of Jesus Christ. The whole purpose of him coming was to have men to be 
forgiving. And so when we are forgiving, we are operating in the person of Christ. Oh, I feel that I feel I, it's something. I don't know what it is. It's something that's trying to stop this me, this message. I, I feel resistance in the spirit. He said, "Lest Satan should get an advantage of us." In other words, if Satan doesn't have one, he will get one over us if we don't deal with forgiveness, with our past. For we are not ignorant of his devices. Notice Paul addressing the fact that the adversary had devices and that we are not ignorant of his devices. Yet it didn't seem like he mentioned the devices here in verse number 11, but he did in verse number 10. See, the devices of the enemy, if you want to just say device, is unforgiveness. It's not seeing properly. The main how would I say, uh, I guess I could say device. One of the main devices of the enemy that he uses uh, is a, a smoking screen, a, a smoky screen. It's, he's the God of this world that blinds the minds of them which believe not the gospel. And so his, 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 his uh, tool, if you will, is to use a smoky screen to blind. That word blind actually doesn't mean uh, uh, without sight. It actually is the, the Greek word that means opaque. And it's when he clouds the mind. One of the ways the adversary clouds the mind is to, uh, that will cause us not to see properly is to not be able to deal with or to see what God is doing, to see what God has done, and to see where God has taken you. And so the adversary will blind your mind. And the issue is, and then I'm, I'm not on the subject that I was on Thursday night, but I'm kind of close to that and probably will be close to it throughout the service, is that uh, we talked about um, offenses. But this whole message is about offenses. And so I, I want you to hear that and I want you to know that. But, in, but we need to see the way God desires and intends for us to see. And we can't see when we have unforgiveness. When there are things in our past that we haven't dealt with. Quite, quite frankly, when there are things that's in our present. Because it's not always about our past. The problem is that we oftentimes live in the past. I'm saying, well, I'm not living in the past. I, I would beg to differ. Many times we, we live in the past. And again, do you see what I see as the message? So I don't want you to get off track with what I'm saying. But the problem is we won't see and can't see clearly unless we deal with our sight. But if there are things that's clouding our vision, we can't see the way God desires us to see. There's an impossibility to walk by faith completely trusting in God, leaving myself vulnerable to life, life circumstances, and everyone that's in my life. So when I live in, and this is not a, a uh, I'm just going to tell you right off, this is not one of those, if you're looking for me to preach to uh, the unsaved and, and, and the the, the, the world and just preach Acts 2.38, I'm not. This message is for everybody. Amen. 
Living in sorrow and regret is an indication, a direct indication that we are not living in the plan and through the eyes that God desires for us to have. Something is clouding our vision when we are living in sorrow and in re regret. We are living in the past. Instead of simply remembering the past, we, we are living in the past. Now, I'm just going to tell you like this. A lot of times people live in, uh, based on everything that has transpired. Maybe everything that has transpired in their childhood or maybe everything that's transpired in their life up to this year. I hear some people say, my, my 2019 was horrible. I hope 2020 is not like that. Well, your 2020 shouldn't be, <laughs> should probably be horrible compared to, the, you know, comparatively speaking. I mean, pretty much the whole world's 2020 hadn't been good. But we live and, uh, based on what has happened. And some people are living out their 2020 and already had their plans for 2020 laid out based on January, February, and uh, March, April, and possibly a little bit of May of 2020. And so you figure that since the uh, first part of your year has been uh, a bunch of sour grapes, you might as well just forget the rest of the year. And see, sometimes we live in yesterday. We live in our past. We live according to regret or sorrow. And I, it's, it's, it's a sad thing to see people who are called children of God who lives far below, and I'm not talking about the poverty line, but lives far below what God intends for them to live based on their view of life. Because many times the view of life is based on what's ha what's hap what has happened to you. And so people walk around being sorrowful, regretting. Some of you who are watching me, I have 10 people in here who are listening. I'm telling you right now, there are people in this church, a part of it, there's people in the church of the living God whose life, whose day is governed by thinking and contemplating on what was, what should have been, what was done or what was not done. What didn't happen? What should have happened? What could have happened? And when you do that, when I do that, I'm living in my past. I, I'm not living, I, you know, we should remember our past, obviously. But we don't suppose to live it. What happened to me last month is last month. What happened to me last year is last year. The good and the bad. I can't live off the highs of last year, nor should I live off the lows of last year. Amen. I got today ahead of me. All I have is right now. All I have, uh, amen, right now is the breath that I breathe. And why am I going to waste the breath that I'm breathing right now over hardships and over headaches and over heartaches of something that happened to me in the past? Oh, hallelujah. Anyhow. We don't acknowledge, I'm sorry, we don't acknowledge the stuff that bombards us. You sit down long enough and thoughts come to your mind. And you're not, you're not thinking about the future. I, I believe if the church of the living God started looking ahead more than they looked behind. Right, right. We'll be a whole lot further than we, where we are. Right. Because too many times we, we, everything is geared towards where we've been. What has transpired 
And I'm sorry, I don't have time for, for focusing on what has transpired. I'm, I, I want to focus on what's ahead. Even when, <laughs> uh, when we have meetings and things of that nature, or just conversations, I, I'm, I, when, I, when I bring something up that has happened in the past, honestly, I'm bringing it up so to not go there in the future. <laughs> when I'm discussing an issue in the church, I'm bringing it up not to draw, draw, drag somebody through the mud or the point. I'm bringing it up to show, hey, this is what happened. Let's not do this again. Let's get to the next place. Let's get to where we're going. Everything should be based on where we're going. Yeah, help us, Lord. God, deliver us from our past. And I don't care if the past is this morning. I don't care if the past is yesterday. Deliver us from the past where we can look forward. There's, there are some things we cannot get to the promises because we keep looking back at Egypt. Looking at the bondage of Egypt. Looking at how they treated us in Egypt. Looking at my life in Egypt. Don't you know you have some promises to get to? And people can't see what they need to see, the promises of God, because they're looking back and living in that. Again, remembering is one thing. I know people say to, to, to forgive is to forget. I am sorry. I don't see that anywhere in the book. As soon as you forgive, God's going to wipe your memory clean. No, God is going to... Re you, <laughs> it's crazy because when Joseph was about set up to be... Uh, to the dream to be fulfilled, God caused him to remember. <laughs> when, uh, see, here we go. He, 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 he still had issues with his brother. Because once he saw them, it brought up all types of feelings. And the Bible says he spoke roughly to them. And that word roughly, I mean, he dealt roughly with them. He was harsh. He was, he, he didn't have, and then they did him wrong. But the Bible pointed out that, you know, you speaking harshly because of what happened to you. See, he didn't get the revelation at that point. That they meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Because if he would have had the revelation, he would have acted and responded the way he did later when God finally worked his motor over and got him to the place he needed to be. He, he, he struggled. The Bible, said, now he, the Bible says when he was being blessed in the seven years of plenty, man, he, he had two children, Manasseh and, and Ephraim, and he named one to be fruitful in the land or whatever, and he, I forget the, the meaning of the other one, uh, but they all had something, some positive meaning. Caused them to forget, right. So it was like, I, I forgot. What did they do to me? I, I remember they did something, but hey, I'm having all the blessings and everything else is not before me. I'm okay. Man, them brothers show up. Now he remembers everything. He's hot. But we, 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 live in, we, 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 we live in the past and we can't get to where God's trying to get. And, and some of us, we, we live in negativity. We, we can't see the positive behind anything. Some of you can only see the, 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 the negative stuff. I have some people, you know, every time they walk through the building, they got something, well, like this, that, and the other. Can you see anything positive? I, I, I'm serious. I have a couple of people, all they do is tell me, you know, well, this is broken here. This is, man, man. Pastor, did you notice this? And that's this. this. Okay, won't you tell me something that doesn't need? Or I'll say, well, if you notice it, fix it. Or better yet, better, definitely better yet, give us the money to fix it. <laughs> when you live in negativity, that is a, that's a direct indication that you're living by uh, um, 
Uh, what you see, naturally speaking, you're not seeing things clearly. You're, you're living by your feelings and your emotions. You're not living by faith. And, and, and you're not living by faith and hope. When you are living, when you are negative, when a person is negative, I'm, I'm going somewhere, but I got, this is, this is, and these are in my notes. They've been in my notes uh, for the last few years. I have this, I had this message for a couple of years, so this is where we are. This is this has literally been on my iPad for a couple of years. So living living with negativity is an indication we are not living by faith and hope. Because when you're living by faith, you're not looking at the you see when you're living by faith, you're not looking at the the promises and the promised land saying we can't enter into that. Negativity is no, there are giants in the land. Negativity destroys faith and hope. When you can only see the bad stuff that's going on in your life, I have some people that I've ministered to, I pastor, whatever, and, and I keep I, I try to get them to see positively. I, and I'm sorry, I, you know, yes, of course I see negative stuff. I deal with negative, but my intent and purpose is to get it right for going forward. I, I talk to people. Stop focusing on the negative. They, they talk about everything that's going on. Negative. Why don't you talk about something positive? Do you see God working something good? You know the old, you know, adage, half cup, half empty, cup half full. When you're looking down, it's half empty. When you're looking up, it's half full. And when you just look down, everything is negative. Cup is always going to be half empty. But when you're looking up, cup is always half full. Yeah. <laughs> you're getting there, honey. Living with negativity. It, it, that's proof I'm not walking in faith. Because when you walk in faith, there's something positive that's happening. That you, you recognize that. And, and the problem is you can't get, we can't get to our future. The way it works is you will always be fearful of your future. You will always be in doubt of what God has. You will always worry about what can happen and what will happen if you are living in your past. If you're living in sorrow and regret and you're living in negativity, I'm telling you what, you're going to live doubtful. You're going to live fearful. You're going to think things can't happen, things won't work. And amen, guess what? They won't. Because if positive faith works, negative faith works also. And if we can call those things into existence that we want to see those positive things, don't you know we can call negative things? If God tells us to pray and pray for positive things, don't you understand when we work our mind and our hearts to negative things, we actually bring those things to pass. People don't want to see things get worse, but they see things get worse based on their Negative vibes, as he say. You ever be around someone with negative vibes? You don't want to be around that. If you were to go, if you could go back in time, what would you go back and change? I, I know some of you. If you can go back just to last December, somebody was take all every money, every bit, every. Every penny you have, you would invest in hand sanitizer. Lysol. You would buy all the stock you could in Zoom. Yeah, you would go back. Amen. You would invest in Walmart because everything else was shut down. Every other place, you can only get 10 people in there. You go in Walmart, it's 500 people. But don't let a church have 500 people in it. Well, at least they, they limited the people to go in the liquor stores, too. They kept them open, though. But Walmart, 
You come on up in Walmart, doesn't matter. We got some lines in the, uh, on the, in the lanes. But if, you, if you're a bad, fine. You don't, fine. Because I'm going to put my plexiglass up. Y'all can get it amongst one another. Got my plexiglass up. Somebody would invest in Walmart. Okay, here we go because of hindsight, right? You always wish you can go back and fix something. How many wish you can go back and fix something? You see, that's the problem. When we think we can go back and fix something, I, there are things in you, I can think of my mind, I wouldn't have done this. And I'm telling you what, I don't know how the timeline works, but I would mess up the timeline. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll go back there and see myself. <laughs> And then I mess up the whole timeline. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you think you're fixing it. Like I said, I don't know how the timeline, obviously I don't believe in you going back in time and all that. I think it's just a subtle thing. That's just how it is. But you know how those movies are. You go back and you want to change this. You want to change it. You want to fix this. You want to fix that. And you don't realize. And then by the time, you know how it works in those movies. You go try to go back in time to fix something. Then by the time you get back to the future, man, things are a complete mess. And you made it worse than the things are. Why? Because you're trying to be God, trying to fix your past. Won't you leave the past to God? God, won't you leave it up to him? God knows exactly what he's doing. And too many people want to go fix their past. Hello out there. God is the one who fixes your past. He places it under his blood. He forgives you, gives you a clean slate, and tells you to start all over again. Why do you want to go back after God got you out of your past? Why do you want to go back to your past after God delivered you from your past? Why do you keep going back there when God is trying to get you to go forward? Why? Why do we live in our past? Well, you don't know what they did to me. I want to, some of you want to go back to your past and mess somebody up. <laughs> you want to go, what that person did to you, I remember, oh yes, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. You want to get somebody back. You want to change things. You want to change relationships. You want, you want to change decisions. Don't you know you learned from your mistake? Now you want to go try to get it right because you got 2020 vision. The problem is you go back messing that up, you're going to mess something else up trying to, you, you fix that. You mess something else up. Why? Because you're not God. Why? Because God has this vision, you know, he, he doesn't have a, what you call a x-ray vision. He has this vision, it's, it's God's vantage point. And God is designed for us to see through his vantage point. But God can't get us to see through his vantage point because we're still looking at our past and trying to manipulate things, uh, our failures. Living in fear, doubt. Where, where, people, where, I mean, the church of the living God. Well, I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. Give no thought for tomorrow. Hey, the, the, day, the, 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 the evil today is sufficient thereof. There's, there's enough evil in your life today that that's the only, the only thing you need to focus on, the evil that you got in front of you. Why are you worrying about the evil that happened, happened to you or what could befall you? You got enough going on in your world today that's going on right now that you need to focus on. You don't need to focus on anything else. But the problem is, God is trying to get us to see how he sees things. 
it would be wonderful if we just start seeing things the way God. See, God's vantage point is all, and he gives us insight on his vantage point. Like I said uh, last week, he, God gives us hindsight, he gives us insight, and he gives us foresight. And we, the problem is we, we, the hindsight we get, we want to go back and fix stuff, and we stay, we stay in the past. Right, right. And God giving us the ability to look in the past is not to, to live a life of regret and sorrow right. and shame and to keep bringing hurt up all over again. What they did to me. I can't get over it. I had somebody tell me, I can't get over this thing. I, I, I'm, I can't get over this, Pastor. I'm saying to myself, you ain't going to make it. <laughs> you, you ain't going to make it. I don't know. <laughs> All right. You ain't going to make it. I don't know what else to say. You can't get, you're telling me you already, you're telling me you are playing God. You are playing God. If God can get over stuff, who are we? If the only perfect one, the only perfect, perfect one can get over People abusing him, misusing him, accusing him, rejecting him, neglecting him, blaspheming him. Who are we when we're not perfect? Tell you what. <laughs> Jesus, I'll tell you what. This is what you do. You, you, you got an issue. You want to bring to my attention the brother that got that little speck in his eye. Jesus, he got that little, little, I see a little speck. Can you deal with that speck? It's bothering me. And Jesus said, you, 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 you know, you, you focus on the little speck that's in your brother's eye. And you don't want to focus on the beam that's coming out of your eye. You want to get, you know, you want to pull out the daggone magnifying glass and a, a microscope and tell, oh, I see that in you. And you walking around with a, a light pole hanging out of your head. Right, right. Every time somebody move, come near you, you they got to duck. Because you got all that coming out of you. And you don't want to forgive the speck that's in your brother's eye while you carrying around a light pole. This big beam. Now, the issue is we need to stop worrying. Stop focusing on that. You don't know what they did to me. Jesus knows what they did to you. Well, I don't know if I can forgive him. Well, I forgive them, but I don't want any bother out of them. I, it's just so deceptive to talk, you know. So I forgive them, but. Ain't that somebody tell me, well, Pastor, I forgive them, but they just, they just, struck, they just cut up the, the, the contract of forgiveness right up. Yeah, I forgive, but uh, you didn't forgive. Don't worry, I'm not talking about forgiveness, even though it seems that way. I'm talking about seeing, seeing, seeing the way God sees from his vantage point. Do you know the word vantage point comes from the word, actually, it's a, it was a shortened form of advantage. It's a shortened form of the word vantage, uh, uh, advantage. And so the vantage is, uh, the word vantage is a position that affords a broad overview and a, a broad view and perspective. And so God is trying to get us to see things from his, his vantage point. You know, some people just only see what they want to see. You try to tell somebody something, they say, that you, you try, especially when you, try to get, when you try to get somebody to look at themselves. They don't want to see it. They're not going to see it. 
So a vantage point is a position that affords a broad overview or perspective as, uh, as of a situation or place. It's a position or place that allows one a wide or favorable view. And God is trying to give us a favorable view of everything. And God is trying to get us to look at stuff from his vantage point. So when we see things now, we see it from a different vantage point, and now we got a different perspective. We have a different view of it, and now it doesn't look as bad as it did. Well, you know what so-and-so did? You know what so-and-so said about you? That's why, and I hate to bring it up because some people just say, yeah. That's why I didn't, some, some of you were so... Uh, didn't really understand me when I had, I don't know how many people had to call me, Pastor, Pastor, <laughs> you see that thing, you, know, so, you, you see that happening there, you see that Pastor, Pastor, oh, oh, oh. our church is looking bad, our church is being broadcast, it's looking horrible, I'm like, no, it's not looking horrible, it's only looking horrible to those who are going to see it as horrible. Right, right, right. And if you see it as horrible, something's wrong with you, you looking through somebody else's eyes. <laughs> We let, too many times we let people frame what we see. I didn't see it that way. I just didn't. You, you, we, got to, we have to start looking at stuff the way God sees it. God sees the whole picture. He knows exactly what he's doing. I got some places I want to get to, and I know this is not a typical Sunday morning message. L listen, so uh, the, the scripture says, hey, he started talking about forgiveness. You need to forgive. I forgive those who forgave you. Why? Lest Satan have or get the advantage. Satan gets the advantage of us. He takes the vantage point. Again, the word vantage comes from the word advantage. It means to have the advantage, to have the position that has the advantage. That's why when, when there was a war, when there were wars, they would always go to the vantage point, or they called it the advantage point. You go to the high point. If you get the high point, if you get to the hill, guess what? Go, well, see, you look down on everything now. Everything is below. Now you're okay. But see, when oh, hallelujah. We need to understand that God is trying to get us to see. Why? Because when you get up on here, you can see everything clearly. When you get on the hillside and God is trying to get us to that place where we see things and we see things in our past. Help me, Holy Ghost. I wish we start taking our past and use it as a weapon. I said we need to start taking our past and use it as a weapon. Now, what the enemy does is he takes our past and uses it at, to his advantage right, right, right. as a weapon. That's why he works at keeping us in a place of not forgiving people. So what has happened to you in the past, now Satan makes that his advantage, because if he keeps your heart all messed up, now he's got the advantage because you're not looking at your past the way God intends for you to see it. Now Satan has the advantage over you. Why? Because you can't get over your past. And you can't get over the people that have done something to you in your past. And so the Bible's telling us, hey, Satan has the advantage. When you and I don't deal with our past properly, Satan has the advantage of And that's the, pro the problem is we don't even know we're ensnared in his trap. We're caught in his web, don't even know it. It's like the frog in, in the, the, uh, the boiling water, and the, wa the water's being slowly turned up. And the frog is fine as long as you just slowly, slightly turn the temperature up. Before long, somebody's going to be eating some frog legs. Why? Because 
We, we, we don't see the enemy working in our lives trying to dupe us and trying to... Now, see, I know the problem with this is so many Christians right now just think this is a general message to... And it is, doesn't apply to them. Like I said, Sunday night. That's the problem with offenses. It's people half the time don't know they're offended. Well, I'm not offended. I'm just, I'm just mad at you. <laughs> I'm not offended that you just hurt me. I'm not offended you just made me angry. No, 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 no. Oh, I, I don't have a forgiveness problem. When, when we don't forgive, Satan has the advantage. And we can't have the advantage or the vantage point. And that vantage point is to see how God sees it. You see, again, we need to make everything in our past, it, that, that needs to, we need to make that, that thing that happened. Now we need to say, you know what? I'm going to use this. This is going to be my weapon. Jeez. That was something that happened to me years ago. Years ago. I started thinking about that thing. And it started messing with me. And, uh, and the Holy Ghost kind of caught me upside the head. Cling. Like, you need to thank me for that. I was like, huh? You need to start thanking me for what, that, what happened there. Thank you for that mess? And the Holy Ghost began to show me everything he did from that mess. And I was like, well, praise God. For the first time, I looked at that mess in a positive light. I, oh, my goodness. You see, God said, I, well, I couldn't have gotten you to where I've got you to right here in this situation without putting you through that mess. I started saying, oh, man, I got to go tell that person, thank you. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. You, you try to hurt me, but praise God, you blessed me. You see, anything that's made you better? Well, you know, you can either be better or better. We, we, you know, we say that, but we don't mean it. My daughter, I told you before, my, she used to play this song. It would say, bitter, bitter, bitter. That's all I remember because she played it to death. I mean, all, out of the 24 hours in the day, she played it, I know, 16 hours. I mean, she must have had automatic rewind or <coughs> better, 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 bitter, bitter. I'm like, girl, are you better yet? <laughs> man. God's man. Here's God's vantage point. Let me read a couple of scriptures. For I know the thoughts I think towards you. Saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you to or to give you an expected end. Why did God tell them that in Jeremiah 29 and 11? Because the people of Israel, they were going through something and they really couldn't see what God was doing. <clears throat> can I, can, do you really believe all things work together for good? <clears throat> do you? Do you really believe that? I, I, right now, and I need to accept that. Everything that's working in your life that's been negative, can you say, you know what, guess what? God's going to bring some good out of this. If, if the church can get the revelation and start living that way, listen to this, Isaiah 46 to 10. <clears throat> declaring the end from the beginning, Isaiah 46 and 10, declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. You, you know, God lives in eternity. And you know what? He, here's another one. <coughs> Man. We got a uh, th th uh, thermometer in here. Somebody's like, man, check that temperature now. <laughs> I'm getting choked up. <clears throat> uh, listen to this one. Romans 4 in the verse number 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom 
Uh, he believed even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. He declares the end from the beginning. And so God, here, here we go. Here, I'll give you a picture of it. <clears throat> Something is starting already. Already. And he's declaring the end of the thing when it first starts. Some, something happens in your life. You know what? You already got your mind made up that this thing is a mess, and it may be, and God got his mind made up that this is going to be something of a, a thing of beauty. You see, because God is trying to get us to finally start seeing things that who is in control? Amen. Who is in control? Who has all things in the palm of his hands? When are we going to start looking at things differently? Here's another one for you. Again, this is just God's perspective, the way God sees it. God is trying to get us to look at things like he looks at it. Paul said in first, or actually Philippians 1 and 2, grace be unto you and peace. That should be enough right there. Grace and peace. That I, 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 I wish the people of God could walk in peace. can walk by peace, live in peace. He said, peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. See, I'm thinking about you. Always in every prayer of mine for you all making requests with, with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day even until now, right? Being confident of this very thing, that he which begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. What God set in motion in your life, he's going to complete it to the end. What God started off in your life, it may not have started off as a blessing. Everything that has happened in your life, let me tell you something, there's some things, can you think of any negative thing? Now everybody's going to say, no, I can't think of any negative thing. Yeah. Can you think of everything that you complained about recently? I know I can. Come on, I, I, you out there in TV land. <laughs> I want you to think about things that are negative that's on the fore. You know that at the forefront, things you've been complaining about, things that stirred you, things that kind of got you go, you know, things that kind of plucked your nerve, things that's just gotten on you, things that, that's troubling you, amen, things that cause you to, to think in, in a certain light. Can we begin to start allowing God to show us a bigger picture and a broader? God desires for us to see like he sees. Do you see what I see? This guy, going back to Joseph, I just love the story of Joseph. I mean, come on. Thrown down in the pit. That wasn't pleasant. It, that was just downright nasty. You know, come on. Brother, why are you going to do me like that? Man, when I get up out of here. Part of his wife. Come on, late. Why, why are you going to accuse me of that? I'm blessing your, 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 your husband's household. If it wasn't for me, your, house, your husband, house, you wouldn't have that jewelry around your neck. You wouldn't have, because I'm helping your, your I'm helping part of us get blessed. Now you're going to do that to me? <clears throat> that, that pit, that prison, it wasn't a pretty picture. Or was it? Or was it? You see, that was part of the picture. If you had a picture of Joseph and his blessing, you had to add the pot, Potiphar's house in there. You had to add the pit in there. You had to add, you can't leave that out. And, oh, yes, Joseph, you, you're going to be uh, the second most in control. Do you understand that it requires a pit? Oh, no, but see my, now, now oh, hallelujah. What if Joseph got released out of the prison? 
and had the power and the ability to go back in time and to change part of his wife's decision, to change the prison, to change being taken into slavery, to change being put in the pit, to change that day. He would have changed that day. What in your life would you change? Not knowing. You see, when, when, when God allowed him to be placed in the pit, that was just the beginning. And God called the end of the thing from the beginning. When God said, hey, you going into this pit, God says, I see a palace that you're going to be in. You don't see it yet, Joseph. You have to get a, a, a better picture. You got to get a better perspective. That's why you do, you're going to have to forgive or less you won't have the advantage. Do you see what I see? I always look at Judah and say, man, that, that guy wasn't right. <clears throat> but God, you, do you know that God used Judas? I'm not talking about when he went around with the 12. I'm talking about when he betrayed Jesus. Did you know God used Pilate? God used those nails. He used the, the crown of thorns. God used that whip. God, God used every single thing that we look at as negative. God used it for good. Thank God for the whip. Thank God for the nails. Thank God for the cross. I think we need to go back and start looking at some things that some of us, we, we got this ball uh, chain around our, our, our ankle. <clears throat> and it's stuff in that, that's stuffed in our past that we, we, we've been hurt by and, and been done wrong by. And we just can't get, we can't get over it. And, and we can't be set free from it. And God is trying to tell us, once you, if you start looking at it differently, that was, wasn't a ball and chain. It wasn't, oh, hallelujah. We can just start looking, looking at things a little differently and see, hey, God was using these things. And so that's why Joseph was able to say, hey, I, I, I know, I understand. Before he was speaking cruelly, you, you are spies. I don't trust you. You're no good. Treat him harshly. But he was able to say, brothers, I forgive you. I, you didn't really mean well by this. But God really did. Could it be, Moses, that God is cranking on Pharaoh? God is using 10 plagues, and every time God uses a plague, God hardens Pharaoh even harder. Why is he so hard on me? Why is he causing us to do double labor? God is using Pharaoh. God is using him for his purpose. Stop looking at right now. Stop looking at the past. Won't you try to get a picture of what God is trying to do? do you, church, do you know where we're headed? Do you understand where we're headed? That's why we need to make sure we take care of things. Because if we don't, Satan has the advantage. He has the vantage point. Where God is, God is expecting us to see things a certain way, and we can't get over certain things, and because we can't get over certain things, the Satan has the advantage point. He has the position that we're supposed to have and see things the way we're supposed to see it because he really sees it, and we can't. We can't get over it, and, God, and Satan is using it as a tool against us when God wants us, us to use it as a tool against him. So Jesus was able to say, no, it's not, you're not going to be able to use this as a tool. Father, forgive them. Forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. When they know what they're doing, forgive them. When they mean to do it, hey, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. 
Forgive them. They meant it. They knew what they were doing. The brothers knew. They meant it for evil, but God, you meant it for good. But the cross, God, they didn't even know what they were doing. And God, forgive them. So whether somebody meant it for evil or whether they just didn't know what they were doing, we need to make sure we have eyes to see so we can see what God sees because God knows the end from the beginning. And when God starts something in your life, when he allows something to come your way, it may seem negative, but God has an ending point and God is trying to bless you. God is trying to strengthen you. He's trying to get you to grow in him and to be clean slated, a right heart, a right spirit. And God is trying to get you there, but you're stuck in the end. We can't see. Now Satan has the advantage. And that's why Paul said, and we know all things. All things. So when I didn't like something, and I don't like things, I need to say, okay, I'm going to try to think as positively as I can because you are going to work it for my good. Do we really believe that scripture? Do Do we really believe that? Do we really believe that? Yes, I believe it. He's not just the author. He's the finisher. God starts where he finishes. Our problem is when something starts in our life, guess what? We're going to finish it. We're going to have the last say. We're going to get the last word. We're going to make sure we come out on top. We're going to make sure we fix this thing. We're going to make sure we correct this thing. We're going to make sure that we can, you know what I'm saying? How about we just, just do nothing and just let God He's the author and the finisher. He's the first and the last. He's the beginning and the ending. Alpha and Omega. But we have to walk by faith. We got to trust God. We got to trust, hey, God, I, 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 you know what? You started this thing. I don't understand what's going on. It doesn't look pretty. It doesn't look good. But God, I'm going to walk and I'm going to trust you, God, whatever, everything, every negative thing that has ever happened in your life, every negative thing that's going on right now. Won't you begin to see there is, there truly is a bigger picture in and, in and of itself, maybe by itself. It doesn't look good. Hey, yes, maybe something hurt you. Something has devastated you. Hey, I don't know what condition you're in. I don't know what your finances. I don't know what your life is. I don't know what your marriage situation is. I don't know what there are things that was been promised you. It hadn't happened. I don't know. Maybe you had some uh, a major event that has happened in your life. Maybe you've lost a loved one. Hey, maybe your health is, 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 is out of whack. And hey, can everything in your life work together for good when God is working? God is trying to work these things for your good, but you won't let God do it because we get in the way and then Satan has a vantage point and God can't do what he needs to do because we step in and we hinder God. You can stop the process. Joseph could have stopped the process. Jesus could have stopped the process. Come down off of that cross, Jesus. Come down. Jesus had the power to get down off the cross. Don't you understand that? He had the power to call the legion of of angels. He had the power, amen, to to destroy everybody that was uh, persecuting him. Jesus had the power, but he would not do it. I know your life is just going by perfectly. It's nothing that has happened that hasn't caused any negative feelings. 
negative thoughts, and everything is okay. No, there are things in your life, there are things in my life. I'm telling you, and for some of you, it's just words, but I'm telling you, some of you need to get a revelation. Every negative thing that you've been complaining, I'm talking about me, I'm talking about me. God, you're working this thing for good. I don't like it. I don't, I don't like it. I don't, <laughs> I, I, I don't like going through situations, and I don't like going through trials. I don't like going through difficulties. I don't like negativity. I don't like, I, I like things to be going well. But when things are out of my control, when that things I can't control, then I just have to trust God and say, God, come on, work it for, you, for my good, God. Work it. Wh whatever you have to do, because something good is going to come. I don't know. Something is good is going to finally come out of this thing. But I got to stay in the process. The pit was part of the process. The prison was part of the process. Persecution was part of the process. We all want a blessing. But I say, how many want to be blessed in here? How many want to be blessed out there? Everybody, yes, I want to be blessed. And then we start looking at, at, at the numbers in our bank account. We start looking in the mail, looking for money. Sometimes a blessing comes by way of eviction notice. Sometimes a uh, blessing come by way of a bill in the mail. Sometimes blessing come by way of a phone call. Uh, sir, I'm sorry, but um, we're going to have to let you go. What? I'm doing everything I can. I'm being the best Christian I can. What is God doing? Why is God allowing this stuff to happen in my life? Why am I going through this? Because God sees the bigger picture. He sees the end from the beginning. God knows. He declared it. God says, I am doing some things. You can't see everything. If you can only walk by faith, if you can live by faith, if you can live in hope, if you can start trusting me, stop looking at the negative as being negative and understand I can take the negative and bring about a positive. You need to bless me in all things. Bless me at all times. Be thankful in everything that I do in your life. And guess what? I'm going to work everything out. Oh, we, 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 God, oh, that's just a pipe dream. You, we, how, you trying to tell us to live in Disneyland. No, Disney is not real. But this, what God has for us is real. I'm talking about faith. I'm talking about living in his kingdom. Just about done here. Stop living wanting to change what has happened. Everything that you wanted to change, you need to go back and say, you know what, God, I wouldn't change a thing. Yes, there are some accomplishments I wish I had. There are some bad decisions I wish I wouldn't have made. But at the end of the day, God, I wouldn't change it. You know, there were certain careers I, I wanted to pursue the things that I wanted to become in, uh, uh, naturally speaking. And I thought long and hard several times, God, I'm so thankful for, for being where I am and doing exactly what I'm doing. Some of you need to be thankful for where, where God has you right now. It could be the pit. Thank, thank him because he's trying to get you to a place. God, it, it is not the will of God for his people to live a downtrodden, negatively viewed life. Because you're not living in faith and in hope. When you're living right now in the natural, the temporal life, and, and today in the present, when you're living in the present being negative, 
and having that negative outlook, you're not walking by faith. And you're not walking in the hope that's in him. When you are fearful, has, have doubt about your future, when you worry all the time about what can happen, you're not trusting God at all. You're not trusting God. Because faith and living in the, 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 the future or having the, uh, the peace of your future and the peace that God's going to meet your needs and the peace that God's going to, God has your best interest at heart. When you have that and you walk and you live by that, you're not going to live that life where you weren't worrying, worrying about things. You're not trusting God. You're not living in faith now. You're not trusting God. And then when you live a life of always thinking about what happened to you, you're living in the past and you haven't put it under the blood. You haven't put your childhood under the blood. You haven't put things that, have, that, have, that has happened in your life under the blood. And when you live, whether it's your present, your past, and your future, under those conditions, whether it's any of those or all of those, you're not seeing the way God desires for you to see. You may think you're seeing clearly, but you're not. I remember when I first found out that I needed glasses. I walk around, I'm talking. And I'm trying to read a sign, and I'm doing this, and I could not see it. And I said, man, I mean, get, hold, and I told somebody, I said, hold up one second right here. I want to go over there and see what that says. And they said, blah, 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 blah. They, put, they, they read it. And that's like, you can see that? I said, yeah, you can't. I said, no. I said, hold up. I said, can you see that sign? He said, yes. I said, no, 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 no. I said, wait a minute. I called somebody else over. I said, read that. Said, blah, 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 blah. I said, you can see that? He said, yes. I called a third person over. Can you see that sign? They said, yes. I said, read it. Blah, 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 blah. And I said, wait a minute. I need glasses. I thought I was seeing clearly. I had to go up to the, but I just thought everybody just had that range of vision. I didn't realize I wasn't seeing clearly. You see, you only see what you see, and it doesn't mean you see like God intends for you to see. Maybe God is trying to get you to see things clearly, and it calls for me to get some corrective lenses. Now, I see clearly. I'm telling you, there are people that are walking around. And just because they see, they think they're fine, that they can see clearly. But that's what that word blind means. It's opaque and smoky. Y'all can come on out. It's opaque and smoky. I'm only going to be about 30, 40 more minutes. Y'all can just stand right there. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't know about you, you all. Social distancing now. <laughs> we, we, we are in this time that we're living in, and it's, it's something to behold. Now, had, had anybody ever heard, I know it's going to be one in the crowd, somebody out there. I wish we had a whole church. If I tell them, have anybody ever heard of social distance before uh, December of last year? Yeah, I have. There's always one. <laughs> they heard of everything. Now, has any of y'all ever heard of social distancing? Huh? There's some other terminology now. That, I mean, new terminology. Never heard of it. Now, all this stuff was on the horizon. No one, even the people who caused this thing, I don't know who started this thing. Even if it was done by inside of a laboratory, people experimenting and all that, or whatever, whatever, how it came about, they didn't know they were, they were making. 
But God knew. When I was walking around as a little boy, playing with God knew. In 2020, Charles, this is what's going to transpire. There's going to be a coronavirus. And I'm going to be preached. First of all, I wouldn't know I was going to be a preacher. And you're going to be preaching. You don't have to wear a mask. If somebody would have told me that when I was 18, 20, 25, you're going to be preaching, whatever, and no, we wouldn't have believed it. But God saw all that. I got a question for you, sister. Where are you going to be um, next Wednesday at 3 p.m.? You see, yeah, there you go. She thinks she's going to be it. That's exactly what she should say. She had to think about it, though. God is the only one that's already there. He has everything laid out, the blueprint and everything else laid out for us. And he says, this is all I want you to do, Sister Raquel. If you just allow me to show you what I have for you, by the time you get there, you're going to be in the place that I have for you. But if you don't see things like I'm trying to show it to you, you could end up anywhere. Right. There's no telling where you'll end up because you won't be able to see clearly. You'll choose a path that God hadn't intended for you. And if you don't get over some things, can I just tell you before next Wednesday come, somebody's going to do something and they're going to, I'm not prophesying, and, and they're going to mess you up and it's going to cause you to lose. And see, see, those type of things happen and we don't see it. Things will transpire in our life and we just think it just comes about. And God said, don't you know that I had all these orchestrated. I'm working these things through. Can we start looking at things a little differently? Can we change our perspective? I think some people need to, 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 to repent right now, right, every, right where you are and say, God, I've been looking at some things through some filthy lenses. I haven't been looking at things clearly. I, I, I've been looking at things. I've been looking at people. I've been looking at situations. I've even been looking at you. I've been looking at your kingdom. I've been looking at what's going around in this world, and I'm getting my own uh, opinion and views of things. God, I don't want to see things. I want to see things as you see it, that I can feel about things the way you desire for me to feel about it, the way you feel about it. Why don't we pray right now? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, God, give us eyes to see as you see. That our judgment won't be cloudy. Our vision won't become dim. Our hearing won't become dull. And our heart won't be calloused. Lord, that we may perceive. That we may see we would hear and that we would receive everything that you have prepared for them that love you. In the name of Jesus Christ and God, I pray for everyone that's listening, every, every saint, every sinner, everyone that's struggling, everyone that's struggling with their past, struggling with people, struggling with getting over situations and and how their life has shaped up to, and what their life has shaped up to be. God, I pray right now that you would lose deliverance. Deliver people's heart. Deliver their mind. Deliver their spirit. Deliver their life, oh God. Deliver people from addictions. Bitterness. Anger. Regret. Sorrow. Frustration. Heartache disappointment, failure. In Jesus' name, I pray, Lord, for faith and hope. 
I pray for the joy of the Lord that it would become the strength of your people. God, give us eyes to see. God desires for us to have the vantage point. He desires for us to have the advantage point. But we need to take care of some things today. There are some people who are listening. There are some people who are watching. You need to take care of some things today. You need to really take care of some things that's, that's uh, settled in your heart, in your mind, that have shaped your life, that shaped the decisions you've made. You've, you've chosen to do things based on things that have transpired and how you see things. You've charted your future based on your perception, and you can't see clearly. I believe some of us need to forgive God. Some of us need to forgive others. Some of us just need to forgive of some things that have transpired in our lives and decide, you know what? These things will no longer keep me bound. They will no longer keep me thinking in a negative light. They will no longer be used by the adversary. He won't have the advantage over me anymore. He won't bring anything up to me that I won't rejoice and give God the glory for. Everything he tries to do to pull me down, I'm going to use it to be lifted up because God is working it for my good. Everything negative in my life, God is working for my good. Somebody need to do a two-step right now because everything God has done in your life, if it was a pit, if it was a prison, amen, if it was persecution, no, what, no matter what it is and what it was, God says, I can use it. I am using it. Won't you see things differently? See that like God desires for you to see. In Jesus' name, we're going to worship the Lord right where you are. Won't you just lift your hands to heaven? As you're praying, as you're repenting, as you're confessing, as you're opening up, as you're surrendering your past, your present, and your future to God, as you're trusting him with your future, amen, as you have faith in your presence and you have your, your, your past clean slated before him, come on right now, worship him, surrender to him, give your all to him, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Jesus name Jesus name Jesus name Whatever you're doing inside of me it feels like chaos but somehow there's peace it's hard to surrender to what I can Somehow there's peace. It's hard to surrender to what I can't see. But I'm giving in to something heavenly. Whatever you're doing inside of me, Lord, it feels like chaos. But somehow. to surrender to what I can't see, but I'm giving in to something heavenly, whatever you're doing inside of me, it feels like chaos, but somehow there is peace, it's hard to surrender. To what I can see, but I'm giving in something. I'm giving in. I'm giving in to something heavenly. I am giving in to something. I'm giving in. Whatever. 
that forgives, that lives and lets live, one that keeps loving over and over again, one that men can't defend because your word is within, one that loves without price like you, Lord Jesus Christ. I want a heart that forgives, that lives and lets live, one that keeps loving over and over again, one that men can't defend because your word is within, one that loves without price like you, Lord Jesus Christ. I want a heart that forgives, that lives and lets live, one that keeps loving over and over again, one that men can't defend because your word is within, one that loves without Christ like you, Lord Jesus Christ. I want a heart that forgives, that lives and lets live, one that keeps loving over and over again, one that men can't defend because your word is in, one that loves without price like you, Lord Jesus Christ, you're doing inside of me. It feels like chaos, but somehow there is peace. It's hard to surrender to what I can't see, but I'm giving in to something. I'm giving in, I'm giving in to something. God, praise God. I pray that um, this wasn't just another one of those messages. One thing I know is that God promised to get his church ready for his return, and I believe the messages that God is given people of God, men of God, women of God, um, up until he takes his church home, that these messages are vital and we can just treat them like sermons. This was a message of salvation whether a person has never known God or whether you grew up and was raised in the church, whether you've been in the kingdom 
for years, decades, doesn't really matter, this message. Because it's really not just about how we're living now and seeing now. It's about where we're going. And you can't go to the places that God has for you when you're holding on to some stuff. That's why the scripture says concerning Esau in Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 14. It said to follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall, shall see the Lord. Now when you look at the, 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 the Greek in that you find uh, and especially the, the Young's literal translation it links those two together. Pursue peace in many translations say, says and the sanctification. Seek peace with all men and the sanctification without which no man shall see the Lord. And you cannot separate sanctification from following peace and being right with your brother and sister. And that's why, and I probably wind up saying this again tonight, more, more than likely because it will go right in with tonight's message. That's why you can't live in your past regretting anything that has happened in your past, no matter what that is. And that's why you can't live today based on everything that doesn't go like you intend, plan, or desire. It's the will of God for the people of God to live an overcoming life so we can have the advantage. God desires for you to have... You ever felt like that life circumstances, everything is overpowering you, that things and people have the advantage over you. But God desires for us to have the vantage point. He's called us to be the head, not the tail. God has desired for us to see things differently. If that means to be a positive Peter, then that means that. It doesn't mean you won't have to deal with stuff that's wrong and that, the stuff that's not right and, and things of that nature that you won't have to correct. It doesn't mean you'll never get upset. It is the problem, bottom line is you can't stay there. Because anything, I, I can get something stuck in my eye. I can get my, someone can hit my eye or, or anything else can happen where I may not be able to see clearly. Sometimes because I have allergies, I, you know, my, it, stuff happens, get in my eye, I had to go run water in my eyes for, for a couple of minutes or whatever, and it takes a little while before I get my, my vision together. And so sometimes you will, something will happen that knocks you off, jolt, or jolt you or knock you off point temporarily. But it's not meant to keep you down. As I was to get back up again. We need to get up keep moving in God but I tell you if I can't see I'm not getting up anywhere and so God desires for us to see yeah some of us have some, some things in our lives that we probably wish would change I'm sure I mean how many would have some things they wish they would be different once you start saying you know what I accept those things what they are, how they are right now. I accept them right now. I accept them right now. Yeah, I keep looking over there. And she's like, why do you keep looking over at me? No, maybe you're not. I accept them right now. Right? I accept them right now. I accept them right now. I accept them right now. And God is the God of our future. 
God, I don't want to change anything that you are trying to leave the same. And I don't want to leave the same anything you're trying to change. I want you to be in control of my life, God. And I don't want anything in my past to be a stumbling block, to be a ball and chain. I want to use my past as a gift that God gave me to get me to where I need to get to. And I pray that for you and everyone that's listening. If you're still on, maybe someone to start clicking buttons. I pray that you would uh, join us this evening. I'm going to be picking up on session two of overcoming offenses. If you didn't watch or listen to session one, you can, maybe you can listen to that or go back and listen to it later at another time. But I'm going to be teaching on overcoming offenses. And this is to everyone that, that don't have any offenses to overcome. You need to watch it. And you need to listen to it because Satan has lied to you and told you you never get offended. And you've never been offended. So you tune in. Because Paul said, I had, he said he had to exercise. He had to build himself up. Don't tell me you came out of the womb being able to forgive and you came out of the womb not, not, not having to deal with offenses and you never, never gotten offended. That's never been a problem in your life. If you say that, you probably got uh, nail scarred hands and some thorns on your head, uh, thorn marks and, and wound on your feet and the pierced side and all that. You, you, you uh, were a clone of, of Christ. You were actually, Mary had twins and they just didn't tell anybody. But everybody needs to hear this. Amen. God bless you. One other, last thing. Uh, I sent an email out. Uh, I want to thank those who have responded and participated or are participating as we're trying to make some changes here uh, with the platform. Uh, we still are a little short, so those of you who uh, received an email, if uh, just pray and God lay something on your heart, that would be great. Um, if you didn't receive an email, don't worry about it. I only sent the email out to uh, uh, the church, or maybe I didn't get you email, uh, had your email address. Uh, and so um, I sent it out to uh, long-standing members. So if you receive that email, we've uh, asked for some help with some projects here. And uh, if you are able uh, uh, to respond, that would be great. Again, no pressure for anything. We will be in this facility uh, throughout the week, um, in the uh, morning hours, afternoon hours, um, as we try to get the facility um, upgraded and uh, we will please stand by stay uh, tuned in uh, as far as what the services are going to be what they're going to look like we all understand that the president of the united states has, has said that um, governors and local authorities should open up their, uh, their churches throughout the nation I really feel and believe that we are close. I don't know exactly when it's, it's going to happen, uh, but I, I feel like it's going to be happening soon. So we're making some changes here uh, for the better. And so uh, God bless each and every one of you. Please join in with us at 6 p.m. tonight. In Jesus' name, amen.